Welcome to a new video. This should be a rather short one where we talk about the annoying feature of an Apple AirTag playing sounds when you don't want it. Uh, a quick way to disable that uh, feature will be shown in this video, uh, but just to make it clear, Apple is enforcing that on its users. So first of all, you might ask yourself, uh, what is an Apple AirTag? because there might be some people that haven't heard of this. Uh, it's this small coin-sized device. It is powered by a CR2032 battery and it features the um, ultra wideband and Bluetooth radio connectivity in here. And that's due to the Apple U1 chip, which is capable of both uh, low power data transmission, but also measuring of the time it takes for these radio waves to bounce back, which can be translated into measurement of distance with a precision of about one centimeter within a limited range. Now, because Apple built its own ultra wideband chip, the, this so-called U1 chip, and because it operates a fleet of roughly 1.8 billions of iPhones globally, you can imagine how it makes sense for them to technically and financially sell such a tracker because it doesn't need to transmit too far because before it's been um, picked up by one of those 1.8 billion iPhones that are active globally. So every time this little tracker is within range of an iPhone, the phone will pick up its signal and will report back to the mothership with the AirTag serial number as well as the GPS position of the phone at that time. And uh, this happens transparently, you don't even know it. And while you can turn this feature off if you wanted to uh, on your phone, uh, the ability to pick up these signals, uh, this setting is buried deep and it affects things like how you connect to other Apple products. So you wouldn't really want to have it disabled. Another feature of the AirTag is that it contains a small speaker, which is capable of playing sounds. It can be triggered from uh, the Find My uh, iPhone app. And you can see how this can be useful for locating your stuff. Like when you lose your keys and they're under a pillow or something like that, you play a sound and you easily found them. So people started using these things to track their keys, their personal belongings, like like a bicycle, a car, a suitcase during traveling, whatever, whatever you own and legally have the right to track. But bad people also started using these to track other people, which is illegal. So following up on those cases, Apple decided to introduce a new feature and um, uh, now AirTags will play a sound without any way of stopping that uh, when uh, they have been connected to the same phone for several days in a row. And as you can imagine, this is the case when someone is trying to illegally track you by placing one of these in your car or in your purse, because the AirTag will only be um, transmitted through your own phone, which is the closest one. Uh, and that's always with you. But before we continue, let me mention the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, which is a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. The Chinese New Year holiday is coming to an end now and everyone is returning to work, so you can start placing your PCB orders again on their website. They also offer services like 3D printing, CNC machining and manufacturing services in general. Check out their website, link below. And I get what Apple is doing here, of course, it shouldn't be that easy to illegally track someone and it helps by letting that person know, uh, but why should regular honest people suffer from that? I can see a bunch of perfectly honest usage scenarios where you don't want the damn thing beeping on you, like what if I'm tracking my bicycle and it got stolen? and is now living with the thief. Instead of the tracker silently signaling the position and giving me time to convince the police to act on this, it will instead just notify the thief that the bicycle is being tracked, which gives him plenty of time to discard the tracker and of the bike. And the examples can go on. So here's uh, what you'll need to uh, take care of this and disable the uh, sound completely. You'll need just a utility knife and uh, with some careful prying, uh, we should be able to disable the speaker with minimal damage for the air tag. And it's best if you use one of these more beefy utility knives with a uh, strong blade, which would prevent it from snapping in the process. I've seen a bunch of other videos uh, showing you how to take this apart, but they almost always use excessive force, which breaks the little clips holding the small enclosure together. And what I'm going to show you next allows you to open this without destroying it. So the first step would be to open the uh, battery cover and you do that by uh, applying some light uh, force and rotating it. We can remove the battery for now then just hold the air tag in this position and there there are three clips in total uh, which is keeping this enclosure together and um, i've 
tried my best to mark them with this these red dots where approximately those clips will be on this enclosure so uh, just put your air tag in the same position and uh, take a marker and mark it in the same points as shown here the clips should be roughly at these uh, positions so by carefully inserting the uh, knife blade uh, right between the two halves of the enclosure uh, at each of these uh, three spots should allow us to unclip the retaining clips one by one without destroying them and uh, just keeping the enclosure in one piece so try to do this uh, slowly don't rush it don't insert the blade uh, more than a few millimeters uh, inside the enclosure because at that point you might be destroying uh, stuff on the internal PCB. Just slowly work your way and unclip those uh, retaining clips. Once you have it opened, we get a clear view of the speaker, which is composed of two parts. We have the coil on the PCB side and the magnet on this part of the case. And the simplest way to disable the sound is just to remove this magnet and uh, you can just uh, pry it off with the uh, same utility knife. It's only held in place by some light adhesive. There you go. And at this point, uh, you can just put the air tag uh, back together and if at any point in the future you want to restore the sound, you can just glue the magnet uh, back in its uh, position. Now, one mention here is that a speaker coil, even without a magnet, still makes a very small amount of noise. It's, uh, it's something that if you have good hearing, you can only hear in a very quiet room by placing the air tag pretty close to your ear. Certainly not something you would hear from one or two meters away in, in a normal uh, environment. But if you consider that sound to be um, audible and you want it completely removed, then you'd have to uh, gently uh, disconnect one of the uh, coil contacts, which would uh, completely disable it. Now, I don't find that to be necessary, uh, and I'd like to keep this operation reversible by uh, being able to reinsert that magnet. I just uh, mention it in case you want to do something like that. So there you have it. That's how you disable your AirTag sounds. It's a hardware operation. Now, of course, don't go using this uh, technique for illegal purposes. Don't go tracking people or assets illegally. You can only do this on your own devices, on your own stuff, uh, within the legal limits of the place you live. Otherwise, uh, you might uh, suffer some legal consequences. I would appreciate your feedback in the comments below and let me know if you have a better way of doing this or just let me know if this uh, helped you disable a sound on your own AirTag. And if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to support me making more videos like this, you can do it on my Patreon with as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.